Hey guys, you're still tuned in here with us at VBuzz. And before we went on the break, Roshan, we were talking about you know all kinds of news, especially you know about solar powered flight. You mentioned also about climate change. Yeah. Now that is a very very serious problem. It is a very real problem around the world. But just how much do we know about climate change and what is being done to educate the public and remedy the situation? Power Shift Malaysia is one of one on the forefront organisations in Malaysia leading the fight to mitigate the climate change situation. They have made it their own mission to amplify the voice of youth movements in climate change through education and mobilization. Here to talk to us about this is Adrian Yeo and Aisha Mohammed. Welcome to Vibas, guys. Hi. Thank you. All right, All right. The first Thank and most know. important question is, what is Power Shift Malaysia? It sounds like a really empowerment, a movement of sorts. Yeah. So what is it? <laughs> Me? <Okay. Yeah. laughs> um, well, Power Shift Malaysia is a, um, it's a grassroots movement okay. to empower youth especially um, in climate awareness and climate education so they should be able to go out and create their own local movement as well okay so it's kind of like spreading around the uh, so it's you know it's educating you know one person so that they go back to the community yes. and sort of spreading the word as well yeah. but Adrian this movement began you know the catalyst of it was an event that happened in Istanbul could you tell us a bit more about that event yeah, so um, there's a global power shift that happened in Istanbul about uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. So they, they, we, we felt that the whole international youth movement, we felt that hey, uh, something needed to be done, uh, not just uh, concentrated in uh, the, the Americans or yep. Europe countries where the, the awareness and the action is high. We need to spread it like like viral to the rest of the world to, yeah. have, to, make, to solve these global pop uh, issues, we need everybody to be on board. Okay. So we gathered 500 young people around the world and train us up and then so that the next step is for us to go back home uh, whether it's Malaysia and Singapore and on Thailand to do our own power shift in our own respective countries. Okay. So we started 2013 and this year in 2016 we are having our third power shift uh, already. Wow, nice. That sounds extremely, you know, a lot of work to yes. just simply put it that way. So how strong is your team, uh, Aisha, and uh, what are the individuals' role that you all execute on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, well, our team uh, made up of really passionate people, okay. especially when it comes to the environment and also like um, I would say activism. Activism has a negative connotation in this country for some reason, but um, it is a positive activism. So um, we don't have a like a structure, yeah, a proper okay, structure. Yeah. So okay. it's like anyone, who, anyone who wants to join and make a change can come in and contribute, and that's how we work. Okay. So. So there are no sort of set rules or boundaries around this, you know. If you want to effect change, just join the movement yep. and you're ready to effect change. But speaking of change, the climate is changing. <laughs> what yes, is yes. climate change exactly, Adrian? Well, climate change is actually um, um, weather patterns okay. over a long period of time and it's changed. Um, I'll, I'll give you a good example. It's like in Malaysia, we have our monsoon season yep. year in, year out. But in uh, recent years, we have seen that all these monsoon patterns, it's, it's unpredictable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, the main effect would be our, our friends, in, in our farmer friends, who are uh, based on these rain seasons to yeah. plant and to, to when to harvest so that they avoid all these diseases. Yeah. They have complaining they have don't, no longer a strong pattern anymore. Yep. So the monsoon comes and goes whenever they like. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it's like back in school, we know when uh, a certain period of time is going to come, you've got your umbrellas go ready, your school bags ready with the yeah. raincoats yeah. and, and so forth. But you know, Aisha, in, uh, everybody knows, I mean, I always heard the term climate change, but what actually causes it? Um, it's, it's actually quite a natural uh, cause. I mean, there, there's internal, um, internal forcing and even external forcings. That's the term they use. Mm. Um, internal forces can be, you know, from our atmosphere and um, the circulation of our ocean kind yep. of stuff. And external forces can be, you know, humans, uh, human influences. So that's that's what caused global warming. Mm. Yeah. And Adrian, when did we see about this human uh, interference start? I mean, as you mentioned, you really can't do much about the natural causes. Yeah. But in terms of uh, the human effect, when did uh, that really come about? Well, our, our, our scientist friends are, 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 had this method of digging deep into the, the ice cores and then yeah. getting the, the little uh, bubbles that trap in the, the ice cores and, and they, they dated it and they, they measured the carbon dioxide and mm. since like um, uh, 500 years ago. So when, when they tabulate that, that graph and how, how warm or how, how cold the earth is, mm -hmm. so we have, we have known that we have gone through several rounds of 
uh, ice aged, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then yeah. we have come to a warming area. So the, the earth or the climate has been uh, normalizing and, and having a cold period and a hot period yeah. and cold period. It's been quite constant for, for many years Un until um, the, the uh, the, what, we, what we call our period of revolution, where yeah. we discover uh, engines, the industrial and, and, revolution, and, and industrial yes. revolution. That's right, uh, and 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 we put in fossil fuel into our our mix. Mm. So that exponentially pumps up the graph and uh, open up the Pandora box of uh, all these carbon emissions that have been spewing up into atmosphere and yeah. causing uh, the increase of greenhouse gases mm -hmm. that causes the greenhouse effect, trapping all the heat that we produce and also what we're getting from the sun that causes all this climate change and global warming. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned global warming, you know, yep. is that a small facet of climate change? Are there other facets to climate change as well or is global warming the whole encompassing thing of climate change itself? Well, there are, global warming is part of climate change. It okay. can also be global cooling. Which is why the ice age, which is which is yeah. part of uh, the the normal fundamental uh, phenomenon of the Earth, and it warms up cooling. But what's different this time around is that it's beyond the charts. Oh. It's beyond. Um, I'm sure uh, uh, many of us have gone through, uh, seen the inconvenient truth by Mr. Elgo, where he yeah, where he sits up the, uh, the 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 little machine, it goes up off the charts, and uh, <laughs> that that because the carbon dioxide uh, measurement in the atmosphere has mm -hmm. gone beyond 350 parts per million. So at the moment, today, uh, the, uh, the global average is 400 parts per million, very much higher than 350 that we need to be. Okay, I mean, that's wow. quite scary. I mean, in terms of that graph itself, uh, before we move on to the next question, could you just tell for the people who are watching what that graph actually correlated to in terms of what it meant when he started going up that crane and showing the increase? Could you just explain that part to us? Yeah, I remember I mentioned the, the, the ice core in scientists. So, yeah. so when, when, when they measure the, the, the amount of uh, carbon dioxide intensity, that means the, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, mm -hmm. uh, they also uh, measure the temperature on the surface area on the Earth. So when they have this graph of the carbon dioxide and this graph of temperature, when they match it, it's, it correlates. So it means that the higher the carbon dioxide uh, intensity in the atmosphere, mm -hmm. the, the temperature in, in the uh, uh, surface area also shoots up. Mm -hmm. So when we are measuring, uh, when, when we got the data that the carbon dioxide shoots up so way up high, yeah. so we are very worried. And when we are already seeing it, the effects, the, 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 the hottest uh, year is, is, is 2015. Yeah. The hottest March ever recorded is March 2016. Okay. So we are seeing all this hottest month, hottest year, record-breaking, typhoon, record-breaking, everything. It's yeah. happening in the last 10 years. And it's no surprise because of our intensity of the carbon dioxide has shoot off the roof. Wow, and most of this is caused by the Industrial Revolution itself, isn't it? Because when we came around and started building all these machines, it's when this carbon dioxide spikes, carbon monoxide and all <laughs> kinds of noxious yeah. gases as well. So you mentioned that, you know, it's the, the monsoons are unpredictable and the like sort of, but Aisha, would you say that, you know, this, will, this is the biggest visible sign of climate change happening or are there other little signs that, you know, we're not really aware of yet? Um, well, I think... Global warming is itself, uh, the sign itself, but there are other things um, that can contribute to climate change and global warming. Um, deforestation, um, how, uh, the effect of greenhouse gases, okay. and even uh, little things that we do. Plastic, yeah. you know, um, the use of plastic, but it doesn't really... People understand that it doesn't really tie into climate change. It okay. just contributes towards it. So the the effect, the domino effect of it. Yeah. So yeah. It's such, such a, a fragile scary, isn't it? Yeah. You know? No, I remember reading stories about how polar bears are drying, uh, rather drowning, because there's basically no icebergs left for mm. them mm. to you know just basically rest for themselves. But uh, Adrian, you mentioned something a bit early on in terms of how you know climate change and all affects farmers. I'm just here in Malaysia. So what is the economic effect when it comes to global warming or just whatever we are talking about right now? How bad is it right now at the moment? Well, uh, Malaysia is now experiencing this uh, little hot uh, and, and, and dry yeah. weather. Um, it, this is part of the uh, El Nino and La Nina cycle, yeah. which is a natural occurrence. Yeah? Okay. But why is this year again record-breaking and, 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 and going off the charts? It's because um, this natural cycle is being filled up and uh, get extra energy from this global warming. Okay. So um, if you got a, say, a six months or 12 months of a, a El Nino cycle, it's allowed yeah. to go beyond 18 months and, and probably into two wow. years as well. So when all this extended 
a period of drought, extended period of dryness. And, and of course, I may mention about deforestation. It, it also, uh, one is fueling, one is reducing your capacity ah. to, to absorb all this water. Yep. So when, when there is extended drought, we have crops failures. Okay. Um, our, our farmers, uh, agriculture, uh, industry, probably can withstand about one or two cycles of, 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 of crop failure, okay. but not the third or the fourth, yeah. because they'll lose their seeds, they'll lose their uh, ability to work on the land, uh, they'll, they'll lose about the, 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 the land capacity to carry water, mm. which is very crucial to, uh, to, for plantation and agriculture. So when, when all this failure happens, it doesn't only happen, um, of course, when, when crop failure happens, Food prices goes yeah. up, uh, economy it's a snowball uh, effect. Stable, it's more effect. But it doesn't happen just on the ground. Okay? When, when you have drought on land, when you have less nutrient or, 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 or stress going towards to the sea, to the yeah. ocean, it affects our nursery. Oh. What nursery? Our fish's nurseries, the our estuaries corals, and stuff. Our corals are starting to, uh, to bleach and, and die because of this uh, yes. uh, intensity of carbon dioxide and acidity in the, in the ocean. So it affects not just the earth our food production, it affects our ocean as well. So, And it's a whole world basically, just on Malaysia, isn't yeah. it, that gets affected by this economically as well? Well, lucky to say that you know, Malaysia is, is actually in a very uh, fortunate position because we are, we are sort of like a, a, a shrouded and a safe, in a safe zone. We yeah, don't have okay. mega typhoons like our friends in, 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 in Philippines. We don't have major uh, uh, tsunami or drought, which is uh, uh, our friends in, in Indonesia. Yeah. We don't have super cyclone hitting us like Myanmar. Yep. But we are already experiencing the, the, the secondary effect, which is yeah. a drought and crop failure and all. Mm -hmm. Wow, and you know, it's, it's, it's like Aisha mentioned a little earlier, you know, the domino effect of it itself. Now, you mentioned, Adrian, just now about the La Nina and El Nino. And this is something I think has come to everyone's attention in the last 10 years. And you mentioned that it's a natural cycle. So this is not something that is caused by global warming. It's a natural process itself. It's been occurring all throughout since day and age that began itself. Yeah, it, it, it is natural, but the effects of it is being felt. It's being amplified. Magnified. It's being, it's being um, um, uh, making the uh, our human ability to, to, to adapt okay. much difficult. Ah, okay. Speaking about adapting, Aisha, what can we do to you know, basically reduce climate change? Oh, I mean, is it possible to even stop climate change? Um, I would say no, it's not possible to okay. stop, completely stop, because it's a natural cycle. Um, it's the Earth way of operating. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but you can lessen your impact, your carbon footprint. Mm. You can lessen your, um, you, you can kind of like, um, how is it, slow the effects, mm. okay. but not, you know, so because of adaptability uh, mm. for reason. And um, that's the thing, like uh, people now are more aware of um, carbon footprint, mm -hmm. you know. Um, um, they're more aware of their daily habits uh, that contribute to uh, environmental degradation yeah. and stuff. And, and they're taking a lot of steps in, in making sure that um, whatever they do don't impact the earth negatively. Okay. Uh, so. and it's all about limitations yeah. and just trying it's, to slow down the process. Yeah, it's all about uh, taking things in moderation. Yep. And there's also no undo button for this. Like, we're not striving to take us back to the temperature we were you know, 20, 30 years yeah. ago because that's not possible at all, isn't it? Well, 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 I wouldn't say well, impossible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. It, we wouldn't say it's impossible, but it's just it's not uh, at the rate we're going right now. It's not going to happen soon. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we have to start now, so that our future generation, like you know, we don't know how long we live, but yeah. at, at the very least, our future generation will not be able to suffer. Yeah. too much in yeah. the future. And you know, that's where PowerShift Malaysia has a role play. What is the role that PowerShift Malaysia plays when it comes to empowering the youth, when it comes to social and also responsibilities about the environment itself? Well, PowerShift Malaysia, it covers a lot of different, yeah. uh, different topics. So there's, the first step is always, you know, 101, um, climate change 101, or environmental 101. Mm -hmm. That's to create awareness. Once you have the awareness, when you know you want to get the skill, the know-how, so that's where we come into. We we provide trainings for, uh, for various different, um, I would say, topics like digital, okay. uh, digital, uh, marketing, okay. and then creative activism. Mm -hmm. We also um, teach them how to understand policy and governance because that's important as well. Yeah, um, that's the most important thing I think. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if you if you don't understand policy and governance, you you won't be able to move forward yeah. along with the state and you know other 
Um, Everyone needs to work yes, together, isn't exactly. it? Okay. Not it never is going to work out. Mm. You've got to work with each other. But <laughs> uh, Adrian, speaking about you know public policies, which you have been involved in, in a number, could you tell us what you guys are working on right now? Um, at, at the moment, it's, it's very much uh, implementing uh, the, the Paris Agreement. You know, uh, December 2015, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, where uh, the historic uh, UNFCCC, uh, COP21, where we uh, concluded a deal, uh, where we call it Paris Agreement, where we, the whole world, every countries around the world, uh, limits, agree to limit our um, uh, temperature increase to two degrees. Okay. And just last week in, in, in New York, they have, um, uh, Almost every country, is, besides uh, seven countries, signed uh, on, on, on the deal itself. Okay. So moving forward is how do we translate that, that international uh, treaty into a local uh, implementable action. Mm -hmm. So we are working with the government, we are working with the local governments and also empowering every, uh, the civil society to, to go together to solve this problem. Mm. You know, it's great to see that the nations are coming together and you know trying to do something about it. I think the French government has commended Malaysia, you know, for all the steps that we are beginning to take to change this. But worst case scenario, what would happen if we do not make an attempt to try to help out with this climate change thing? Well, th th there's, there's the, the worst case scenario is the Earth will survive. Okay. You know, uh, a global warming to the Earth, to the planet, is just a sneeze, you know, it's just a cold. You mm -hmm. catch a cold and then you just sneeze out whatever bacteria yeah. it goes. So, but in this, in this case, the bacteria is us. Okay. Yeah. All right? Yeah. In this case, the humans are the one that's causing the most of the carbon emission. We, we, are, are, the we are responsible. <laughs> we are responsible to, uh, for this, all this uh, increase of uh, carbon emission and all. Mm -hmm. So we are the, the, the infection. So yeah. um, to, 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 to solve this problem, we have to relook and, and what, what's our role in this planet? Okay. Uh, what, what do we get? What we get from this? Do we want to uh, continue to survive and thrive, or do we want to just trash and leave a bad, bad trail behind yeah. us? So uh, there's a lot we can do, um, and, and we are winning in this war. Okay, and, and yeah. we're winning. You know, wow. um, like like what you mentioned uh, just a little bit ago, the, the solar plane. Yeah. yeah. You know, we we have, we, have, we have solved that problem. We have solved the pu tr pu uh, transport problem. We have uh, solar energy. We have wind turbines. We, that we have zero emissions. You know. Yeah. yeah. And and we have all these solutions in place. And and people are coming on board. Nations are coming yeah. on board. The people are coming on board. The industry corporations are coming on board. We are more and more uh, um, uh, industries are signing on that we want to be res we want to grow the business. Yeah. But wow. in the same time, we want to be also uh, contributing in saving the planet. That's that, that's what we, that's a great move. That, yeah, yeah it is. Mm -hmm. You know, Adrian and Aisha, thank you so much for doing what you guys do. Yeah. You are basically saving the planet for all of us and our future <laughs> generations. Thank you so much, by the way, yeah. for sharing your stories yeah. and, and your theory behind this. Theory behind this. And you know, I'm really, really <laughs> glad to hear that we are winning. Yeah, it should be. If not, there's no Earth. There's no Earth part two. There's in a comic book, but no, it's not in reality. And we all need to do our part, correct? Indeed, we definitely do. But you know what, guys? We're going to go off for a very short commercial break. We'll be right back to speak to a very interesting guest about getting artsy and craftsy <laughs> at the same time. We'll be right back, folks.